Uh, yeah. So uh, there's a couple of key changes with the, the SAT compared to the ACT. Uh, the two big changes are there's a non-calculator portion now, and there's some grid kind of fill and response questions where you have to actually grid in your answers, and we'll kind of talk about that. Um, but those are kind of the two big changes that are kind of main differences. So with the SAT, there's four content areas there. Uh, part of algebra problem solving data analysis, the passport to advanced math, which I got some stuff out on that, and then additional topics of math, which is basically a bunch of random stuff that they like to throw in. Um, there's two sections you take each one separately. Uh, the non calculator portion is 20 questions in 25 minutes, and then the calculator is 38 questions in 55 minutes. So there's a total of 58 questions. All right, so within that 58, there's two types of questions, like I said. Uh, the majority of them are your multiple choice questions, all right, that we all have to come to and know and love, you know, A, B, C, D. All right, the other part of that is kind of what they call the student-produced response. Basically, that means you have to actually fill in your answers. All right, there's 13 questions that we actually have to, like, if you get 12 for an answer, you actually have to fill in, like, bubbles that say 12. Um, that's kind of one of the differences. Um, all right, here's kind of some suggestions for that. Um, and we'll, I'll kind of show you a picture of what they look like. Um, but there's kind of columns with numbers and you just kind of fill that in. So they, uh, you only get credit for the ones you fill in correctly. Um, you can only do one answer or one kind of number, one, oh, let me go. So here's what they look like. Um, but the top part you can see, so there's these kind of, there's kind of four different kind of lines, columns, all right, and then you kind of fill in your numbers. So if you got, you know, at the bottom there, so I can see it, like two thirds, um, you put, you know, write two, fraction bar, three, you have to fill in two, fraction bar, three, and that. Um, and we'll kind of talk about, there's ways to do it and incorrect ways of doing it. But, so going back, um, you only put one circle in. No question's gonna have a negative answer. All right, so that's kind of something to keep in mind. Because if you get a negative number, you screwed up somewhere. Um, sometimes we have more than one correct answer, right? And that way you only, you only, we'll only grade it one. Um, the biggest thing I think with this is if you get a decimal or a fraction of some sort. So like three and a half. You, have to, you can either, Put your answer is 3.5, right, so you have to write 3 to the decimal 5, or 7 halves, so 7 fraction 2. Those are kind of your two options you can do. Um, and we'll talk about for decimals, um, you can either round it, or truncate the fancy word for round, um, but you have to, it has to fill, if you do the entire thing, you have to fill it. So like 2 thirds is like what's on the example here. So like on the bottom there, you, your answer you get is 2 thirds. You either have to do 0. 0.666 or 0. 0.667. Uh, your answer has to <coughs> fill in like a whole grade. You can't just write 0. 0.67 to say round it. You have to fill the whole thing. Um, personally, I would just do the fraction bar, do the fraction. This way you don't have to mess with all that. Um, the other kind of thing with the grid, both of these are correct. So you can technically, so if you get 201 as your answer, you can leave the first one blank and then just start filling in. All right, my recommendation, always start with your last column with your number. All right, and always fill that in. That's my recommendation. Um, this way, it doesn't grade it incorrectly or you don't make mistakes. So always start on the left here and just start filling in your numbers. The grid questions are, I mean, they're not hard, but I, it would, I hate for you guys to get the question right, but not fill it in correctly and get the question wrong. Even though if you get it right, but you don't fill it in correctly, you don't get it correct. That's just how it is. It's kind of dumb, but. All right, um, I have, if you want one, um, the four content areas, I printed out from kind of a little guide thing they have online that goes through like really super in depth kind of what's 
in each part. Um, you know, so you know, analyzing, proving, solving linear equations and systems with linear equations. All right, well that's on here, but it goes like really more in depth, kind of specifically what sort of problems and what sort of um, you know topics. We're more breaking that down a little more. You know, so for systems, you can solve it three different ways: graphing, you know, substitution or elimination. All right, well that you know that's just one example. Then they kind of go through that a little more in here. So I'll have these if you want one. Um, you can take one on your right way out. Um, I only made 25. If I need to make more, I can go make more. Um, but it's I. It's going to be posted on our website. On the website. Theory website under counseling. All right. So the heart of algebra is 19 questions or 33 percent of the SAT. So a lot of it, you know, a third of your the SAT is going to be algebra, which can be good or bad. Um, so problem solving data analysis. So this is kind of more looking at kind of relationship portions, percentages, um, data. This is 17 questions or 29%. All right, this also includes probabilities. So make sure you are familiar with how to solve probability. I've gone through a couple of the SAT tests. And there's always a couple questions on, you know, find the probability of getting a, you know, I forgot what it was, like this person running a red light or something. Path towards good fancy So 16 questions is 20%. So a little more kind of higher what you know, kind of higher level algebra stuff. So maybe a little algebra two, uh, solving quadratic. So that would be like factoring a quadratic, like 4x squared minus 2x plus 6 or something. Factoring that. Um, exponential, you know, so it's like 2 to the x. Um, that sort of equations. <coughs> All right, and then uh, additional topics, again, this is six questions, 10%, so this is just kind of some random stuff. Um, this will have a little, couple questions with like one or two questions of trig, um, angles, triangles, circles, um, volume. They give you all of the volume equations. Um, you know, so for like a you know, sphere, a cube, rectangular prism, they give you area stuff or triangle stuff like that. So you don't need to memorize those. Um, they give them to you. I didn't use them a whole lot for a lot of the questions. So go figure, they give you something you don't need, but what you need, they don't give you. Um, there is some of the trig identity stuff uh, that was on it that you need to have memorized. Sorry. Just do your best on that. <laughs> if you don't have it memorized, that'd be my suggestion. Uh, calculators. Well, so there's a lot of like different trig identities, like cofunction trig identities. Um, so like sine equals um, so sine equals cosine pi over two minus x. Yeah, There are so there are some kind of some trig identity stuff on there. Brady Classen, please report to Mrs. Strabo's room. If you look, if you go through kind of some of the practice problems, you'll see kind of the same sort of trick stuff that they're asking. So I freshman and sophomore boys basketball practice is in the high school starting at 3:30. Varsity boys basketball practice. Please be back in time. It's 4 o'clock. It's ready to start. Thank you. So when I took this is the one that I used. Ah, uh, no. Are you sure? So they would give you, like, find, you know, you're given cosine, I think the exact is like 13 pi over 12 or something like that. So you have to kind of plug that into here to find whatever the equivalence of that was. Because that's the question. How do they set this to the That's, which I don't know. I don't even have that memorized. So. 
that makes me feel better. <laughs> well, like I said, these, like that sort of, it's on the non kaiser but it's also on all the practice amps. So if you go through, you take a couple of them or look at them. If you know you're going to need it, then I would just memorize these things. Just so you get one more question correct. Um, so back to the calculator stuff. So approved calculators, so the CI30s, the little scientific ones, the CI83s, 84s, uh, those are all approved, all the graphic calculators, capstone calculators are all approved. So pretty much any calculators that you've been using in your math class, um, you can use. Some of the, ins uh, the CI inspires you cannot. Um, there's only certain kinds of the inspires you can use. Um, that would be okay. Well, you can, so here's the thing, with, you can bring as many calculators as you want. Um, however, you can only have one out at a time. So, <laughs> so like here's, you know, so here's like your basic scientific calculator, the line you have. All right, here's the little basic graphing one. All right, you can bring both of these and use both. You can only have one out at a time, though, during the actual test. batteries have extras or replace them so you don't run out or make sure it's charged if it charges make sure you have a charge because that would really suck to get there and not have it uh, again we talked about the number of calculators the biggest thing is knowing how to use it for that calculator portion there's a lot of different stuff um, your calculators can do here's kind of a list I put together <coughs> on things your calculator can do based on multiple grand sum factor mean median uh, your quartile standard deviation I you can graph, so you can find minimum, maximum intersections, x, y, intercept, best fit lines, matrices. You can add, subtract, imaginary numbers. you to know how many you know inches are in a yard or how many miles in a kilometer or how many feet are in a mile. They expect you to know that where I found with SAT they gave you that conversion stuff. So I thought I thought that was a little nicer, a little easier. Um, there's a link so if you go to the website you can click on this. Um, this takes you to kind of the sample questions, um, to kind of the one of the sample tests that you can kind of click on and go through and find stuff. All right, so the next couple slides, I have questions from the non calculator and the calculator, so you can kind of see the differences and types of questions they're gonna ask you. So this is a non calculator type question. Answer is A. Alright, and this is all just being able to look at an equation and know what each number, what everything means. Um, so yeah, so the speed of sound in meters per second at zero degrees. Because what it's asking is the uh, 331.4, it's asking just what does that actually mean? Well, that's your y intercept. That's your starting value when you're at zero. That's all it's really asking. So like y equals m plus b, that's basically what that equation is. Answer. All right. Um, but again, so there's no 
no calculator for it. That's just being able to look at something and identify what the numbers mean, what actually everything is. This is another non-calculator problem. Again, this is all non calculator so you know a lot of you kind of know how to solve it. So like you you know you solve for um, yeah you solve for this amount <coughs> angle, which is seventy four, and then you do one eighty minus seventy four minus twenty three to figure out what this angle is. Well, you're actually able to do that by hand. All right, so you might want to brush up on you know your multiplying and subtracting your angles by hand. First thing, that's not Right. So you, whatever you get for this angle, you do 180 minus 74 minus 23, uh, then you do 180 minus that, which will give you X equals 97. 97. Alright, so you get 97. So here's, uh, so here's, again, this is what your grid's going to look like. Alright, that's what that problem was. It was a grid, you know, you got to fill in the grid for your answer. Alright, so here's your grid. And again, I would just start on the left. So you have to write 97 and then fill in the circles 97. Alright, you can also skip that first column or you can even skip two columns if you just got two numbers. Alright, and then fill it in 97. Again, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of doing that. I just, it makes more sense for <laughs> This is the incorrect way to do it. Is if you skip a column in the middle, or if you write nine, skip a column, and then seven, um, that would be incorrect. But I wanted you to kind of see how you would actually, how you would fill it in. So, I mean, again, I hate for you to get the right answer, but fill this incorrectly and get it wrong. Are there questions on the grid and the fill response bubble stuff? Alright, uh, and then here's a calculator question. But it's so long. It is long. Read that? Uh, let's see. <coughs> oh, this is a question? This is a question. I'll tell you what I'm trying to explain. No, this is a question. Here, you know, here's some reading stuff, which you got to be able to read. And then there's three different statements. Right? Be able to tell which statement is true. Right, and this kind of has to go with probability a little bit, be able to, um, like probability and conducting experiments, um, to be able to apply different. Um, the answer, in case you're wondering, is A. None of them are true. I, for the reason why it's none, um, well, the first one's not true because this one is saying all the adults, but you only sample 1,000. So if you take a different 1,000 sample, you can have something totally different. Um, if another 1,000 were selected, you, is this one saying you're going to get 78%? Well, again, if you take another 1,000, People, you're going to get different answers, you're going to get different types. Um, and the last one here, 1,000 adults selected at random for a different city. All right, well, that city could be Erie. You know, that would, again, that number could change depending on what the city is. So none of them are true. Yeah. That's my calculator question. <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> I, I just wanted to present some different types of problems so you can see it's hard. Start thinking. Yeah. 
that song? Alright, um, so that's kind of all the questions that I've put together on here for. Does anyone have questions for me about the math, the safety part? Cooper? How, like, let's say you're, like, what, like, let's say you have, like, two or three problems you have to do, and, like, eh, time's up. Do you, like, quickly rush through those last three problems? No, no, no I will no penalty. You gotta watch your time. There is no penalty for guessing anymore. So, <laughs> right. so if it does happen, if you do have like 30 seconds left and you still have problems left, just guess. BC, 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 whatever. I don't know. Alright. Any other questions? Um, okay, if you want a packet, this kind of goes through things a little more in depth of what's going to be on there. Um, it is eight pages, or four pages front and back, but, so it has a lot of stuff on there. So if you want one, I can hand one out. Um, on that, I, I think I'm all done. So, Thank you. No more questions, guys? Okay, we will see you next Thursday.